This lady has uh, had an EUS by my partner Sarto about four months ago for asymptomatic cystic lesions. And um, uh, he recommended, uh, it looked like a bunch of small IPMNs, maximum less than two centimeters. And he recommended uh, doing her again in four months with an MRI. And personally, I, you know, if, if they look like they're, they're less than two centimeters, no main duct involvement, no mural nodules, et cetera, I personally would just recommend an MRI in six months and then if it's stable, an MRI once a year after that. I don't think there's a point in doing an EUS until there's some kind of change on the MRI. Because if we kept doing EUSs in all these patients, uh, we'd be uh, busy uh, day and night. So uh, I personally, I mean, I haven't seen it uh, yet, but from what he described, I think I would have just recommended doing an MRI. So we'll see. Again, I, I think that we get a little too excited about these cystic lesions, particularly the small ones. Um, there's so many of them now, and we see really, in reality, so few, you know, cystic neoplasms that turn into cancers that I really, I really think we're overreacting to some extent. Okay, vous allez sentir le tube dans la bouche. Respirez bien. Voilà. Okay, penchez la tête vers l'avant un petit peu, avalez un petit coup. Ah, okay, merci. Just keep her a little bit on the side here, there we go. Okay, so there's her liver torquing, there's the vein that came out right there. And then here's these multiple cystic lesions. And, uh, you know, she's got just a polycystic pancreas. And you know, this, these could be, be IPMNs, wh whether they're communicating with the main PD, who knows? Uh, you know, trying to figure it out, you know, which is communicating what, you know, the PD I think is maybe in here, but I'm honestly not going to spend half an hour trying to figure out, this is just so many cysts. I think that is her PD, which is surprisingly easy to follow, but she's looking at a total pancreatectomy if this, you know, really were something dangerous. There is one maybe dominant cyst here, okay. But in a sense, I think it, it may almost be easier to follow this on MRI because to get an overall picture of the pancreas and sit there and really compare the cyst would be probably easier on, a, on an MRI than in the US. So I, I, she just says, you know, and whether these are IPMNs possible, maybe, maybe not. Not 100% sure, but I, I would have just said to follow her by an MRI. So we're going to go on the bulb. Hold on a sec here. There we go. Into the pylorus. There's the apex right there. Tip up and left. Okay, so then you got the portal vein right here. Okay, deep in the hilum. And then you torque right, and then you look. This is the bother coming out of the hilum. And see, I'm torquing with my left arm only. There's the PD down to the papilla. Okay, doesn't look like there's any main duct involvement in the head either. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna go into D2. Again, keep the balloon up nice and big. Just wiggle your way around, and once it starts sliding, then you can just let it slide over. There we go. Sliding, 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 and we're underneath. Once you really see her underneath, then you can shorten up, tip max up, come back. So she has multiple cystic lesions here. This is the uncinate process here, okay, with the mesenteric vessels. So this is all the tip of the uncinate here. And again, multiple, multiple cystic lesions. Uh, honestly, when I see also these um, sort of sharp lines, these sharp edges and things like that, that leads me to believe that it's more of a serous lesion than a mucinous lesion. Then I'm coming back across the papilla. It's getting darker, so I know I'm getting closer to the papilla. And there's the uh, pancreatic duct there. And there's the bile duct. This is what we call the reverse stack sign, where we get the PD and the bile duct coming out of the papilla this way. And so just, again, multiple cystic lesions, but nothing, you know, with a huge mass component. And, you know, what are you going to do? Um, 
Because again, if, if this needed to go to surgery, she's looking at a total pancreatectomy. And I'm just not seeing anything that really merits that right now. Okay, so multiple cysts, I don't see any obvious changes from last time, from what he described last time. And I personally would recommend, again, uh, having her seen by a surgeon, is she really a surgical candidate? And then um, uh, following her by MRI uh, in six months and then once a year, if she remains a surgical candidate, if she remains asymptomatic, uh, and if the lesions don't really change in any way. Follow up on the last case, when I, when I was looking at the, f looking live, I didn't see this, but when I look at the pictures, if you look, um, if you look the, you see the cyst wall has sort of like jagged edges to that, and, and I don't have any d data to support this, but I just feel that when you see this kind of jagged edges, that's more in line with a mu uh, serous lesion than a mucinous lesion, because if you imagine a mucinous lesion is, you know, the, the cysts are formed basically by ducts folded over on themselves or by, or by a cystic lesion that's being filled with, the, with the, this mucus. And in that sense, it's hard to get these angulated little jagged things inside a cyst with a, with a mucinous lesion. So in this patient, uh, it could be an, an IPMN, I don't know. But you have to keep in mind that this could just be a polycystic pancreatic disease that's more serious uh, than mucinous. And overall, my feeling is that... Um, that this is really nothing too dangerous. And in my experience, I think I've, I've rarely seen a patient present with a, a malignant transformation in a polycystic pancreas. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure it exists, but in, in my practice, I don't think I've ever really seen it.